hi guys welcome back to the channel obs and guy made easy in this video i'm going to discuss inevitable miscarriage so what does inevitable mean you, we all know that inevitable simply means whether we like it or not it's going to happen that thing will happen there's no stopping it so what is an inevitable miscarriage an inevitable miscarriage is a pregnancy that will definitely not continue features of inevitable miscarriage so a patient will come to you with a history of profuse vaginal bleeding might be associated with clots or draining so the draining means that the membranes have ruptured and amniotic fluid is coming out increasing crampy low abdominal pain simply means that the patient is having uterine contractions now if you look at the diagram here you find that there's uh, an open cervix here so there's dilatation of the cervix, there's profuse pervaginal bleeding, or there might be draining, meaning that the fetus is almost about to come out because the cervix is dilating here. Now, when you examine the patient, you find that the height of fundus is still the same as the gestational age. Why? Because the abortion has not yet occurred. It's almost about to occur. The cervix is open. When you do your vaginal examination, you find that the cervical host is dilated and you might also feel fetal parts when you do your vaginal examination or products of conception can be felt on examination. Management of an inevitable miscarriage. You remember that this patient will have a miscarriage whether we like it or not. So what you can do for the patient is supportive management as well as active management. So if the patient has lost a lot of blood, you give a blood transfusion. But if they haven't lost a lot of blood, you can correct the blood loss with intravenous fluids. If the gestational age is less than 14 weeks, the patient is most likely going to have retained products of conception in the uterus. They are going to expel, but they will have retained products of conception in the uterus. So what you can do is help the patient remove the retained products of conception using a manual vacuum aspiration with analgesia after the manual vacuum aspiration cover the patient on antibiotics if the pregnancy was more than 14 weeks gestation age they are more likely going to have a complete expulsion but you accelerate the expulsion with an oxytocin infusion you give adequate analgesia, preferably bethidine. Remember that the patient is having a miscarriage, has already lost a fetus. So what you can do for the patient is give them analgesia. They shouldn't be in pain. After expulsion, you can help evacuate the retained products of conception either manually using your hands or using a manual vacuum aspiration. You inspect the specimen, this would be the fetus, after evacuation to rule out a molar pregnancy. You send the specimen, the fetus, for histopathology as well as karyotype. Now, a patient has had a miscarriage, you've done a manual vacuum aspiration, what do you do for this patient? There's what we call PAC. PAC is a post-abortion care which consists of an emergency treatment for complications related to abortions or miscarriages. So what are the parameters or what are the principles of post-abortion care? One is to prevent infection. You cover the patient on antibiotics. You do a bereavement counseling as well as family planning. Remember that this patient has just lost a pregnancy. We want their body to recover and heal so you give them family planning family planning of the choice so they need to space out their next pregnancy three evaluate for sexually transmitted infections including hiv and aids remember that we say that sexually transmitted infections are often missed in pregnancies so you screen for sexually transmitted infections because they can also cause miscarriages if not treated complications of manual vacuum aspiration immediate so whilst you're doing your manual vacuum aspiration you can perforate the uterus if you're too overzealous as you are also doing your aspiration there could be excessive bleeding which can result into hemorrhagic shock this can also be termed as PPH, postpartum hemorrhage. 
The other complications, the intermediate complications are infection. Remember, as you do your manual vacuum aspiration, you can introduce infection in the uterus, which can result into sepsis. Sepsis could be endometritis, okay, or full-blown septic shock or sepsis itself. Late complications of manual vacuum aspiration. Remember, if you had done an overzealous manual vacuum aspiration, you can have what we call Asherman syndrome. Asherman syndrome is intrauterine adhesions caused by overzealous manual vacuum aspiration. You can also have pelvic inflammatory disease. Remember, when you did your manual vacuum aspiration, you introduce organisms into that uterus. So the complication of Asherman syndrome, as well as PID, especially chronic PID, can result into subfertility. So this comes to the end of our discussion on inevitable miscarriages. In the next video, I'll talk about complete miscarriages. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get more updates. Thank you.